Hello, this video is all about the most basic of electronic components, the resistor. A resistor is made up of a mix of conductive and non-conductive materials. This determines the amount it impedes current flow and its value is measured in ohms. In the early 1800s, Georg Simon Ohm, a German physicist, started research using the electrochemical cell, which was an invention by Alessandro Volta. He found that current flows differently depending on the materials used as a conductor. In 1827, Georg Simon Ohm published his findings. He found the important relationship between voltage, current and resistance. This is known as Ohm's Law. So, Ohm's Law is simply volts over I times R. That's sometimes in a little triangle like so. And basically, if you want to find voltage, then cover the voltage up and you're left with I times R. So voltage equals current times resistance. If you wanted to find the current, then you would hide the current and it's voltage divided by resistance. And if you want to find the resistance, then that's voltage divided by the current. Pretty simple. So if we've got a conductor here and we're sending the voltage through and just say we add a little bit of resistance here. I'll use the ohm symbol. Okay. Then basically it takes one volt of electrical potential to push one amp through a resistance of one ohm. Sometimes the V is shown as an E, so that would be E over I times R, and all these calculations would have an E instead of a V, but it's still the same thing. Okay, let's say we've got a 9 volt battery, and we want to light this LED up, and the LED requires 50 milliamps, say. So we go back to Ohm's law, voltage over current times resistance. Now we know we have 9 volts but we want 50 milliamps. 50 milliamps is 0 0.05 of an amp. Okay so cover the resistance so it's volts divided by current so it's 9 divided by 0 0.05 and that reveals 180 ohms. And that makes it so much easier to do your calculations for your circuits. Resistors come in many sizes and shapes. These are heavy duty ones handling 17 watts. These are wire wound resistors carbon composition, carbon film, metal film, and then we've got these tiny little surface mount device or SMT resistors. These are used more often in electronics today. All these resistors are known as fixed value resistors. Now to read the value of this resistor, we'll start with the colour yellow, and in this chart yellow is 4. The next colour is violet, violet is 7, the next colour is brown, so that's a multiplier, so that's times 10. So times 10 just adds 0. Now the fourth band is what's called the tolerance, and this is gold, so there's a 5% tolerance on the value of this resistor being 470 ohms. Some resistors have 5 bands, so to read a 5 band resistor, the first colour is brown, which is a 1. The next colour is green, which is a 5. The next colour is black, which is a 0. And then the next, a brown, which is the multiplier. And then the end one is red. Now red in this case is a 2% tolerance. So this is a 1500 ohm resistor, or 1.5 kilo ohm, with a 2% tolerance, making it 1.47 to 1.53 kilo ohms. Some resistors have a 6 band, 
Now the sixth band on the resistor is what's known as the temperature coefficient and if we just put one in like so because I can't actually find one to demonstrate and that will add this temperature coefficient on the end of it. So if it was brown on the end that would be 100 ppm. SMD or SMT surface mount devices are the tiny little resistors that you find on a lot of modern day things today. The trouble is there's many different ways that they display the values. Some have three symbols, some have four symbols and then you get some that are called E96 and well as you can see by this chart just look on the internet because there's too many ways to display these. In this little demonstration circuit I've got a 556 timer and a speaker and a set of different valued resistors from low to high and this gives me okay it's not perfectly in tune but it's just to demonstrate the different resistors making the different sounds. Some resistors change their value depending on light or heat or even magnetism. This is a light dependent resistor so if I cover up the light the resistance goes up and the more light it gets the lower the resistance. This resistor is known as a thermistor and it changes its value when you change its temperature. So the resistance has gone down, now it's heated up, or the resistance goes back up as it cools down. This type is known as a rheostat because it's a piece of wire that's wound all the way along here, it's resistive wire, and what happens here is if we connect it up, the resistance changes as you move this conductor up and down the wire. This is uh, the same sort of thing as a fader that you find in most mixers and other controls today. And these are known as potentiometers. So inside here there is a track of conductive material or carbon track and as you turn it the resistance goes up and down. I can demonstrate one of these easier with a pencil and paper. In a potentiometer we normally have three connections on the bottom one two three. I'm using a soft pencil here, a soft HB pencil. Now inside the potentiometer you can do this yourself. If we do quite a thick line all the way around, it's got to be a carbon pencil for this to work, and this is your wiper. This is what happens when you turn this shaft, this wiper moves up and down this track. So, now if I measure the resistance of this, it's 100k, 106k. And as the wiper comes around, 80k, 70, 50, 40, 30, not bad, down to 3k. And this is what's basically happening with a wiper inside a potentiometer. And the same thing happens here. It's just a carbon track or a, a resistive track and as you see the resistance is going up and down as I move my slider up and down. Some of these linear faders are motorized. These are often used in mixing desks and consoles and if I apply power to the motor it'll move the fader up and down. Now on this potentiometer it says 10k but it also has a letter B now B, if it's an American potentiometer, would mean it was a linear pot. Uh, same for Asia. If that was an A, it would be a logarithmic pot in America, 
it would be a linear pot if it was a European pot. So it does get a little bit confusing. Anyway, I'm going to open this up and show you what's inside one of these. So we can lift these little tabs up, like so. So I have bent these pins back, and now we can take off the back. And inside here, what you'll see is the two outer pins is connected to this resistive track that runs all the way around the outside here. And the centre pin is connected to this wiper. And this has a sort of spring-loaded arm, if you wish, that's touching the resistive track. And as that goes around, it's changing its resistance. Or rather, picking up resistance halfway between these two. This will always remain the same resistance, and this is the part that's adjustable. When you're making up circuits and repairing things, you sometimes need a good selection of resistors. I mean, this I've had for years, and every time one of the containers runs short, I just buy some more and refill it again. But you can buy a whole set of lots of resistors. There's 610 resistors here. I think this is about five pounds. Uh, and these are from 10 ohms up to 1 mega ohm, a nice selection there. Or, what you can also do is pick these things up nice and cheaply off eBay. These are resistance decades, and this is a very old one. I've had this for like a hundred years, and there's a, another sort of antiquated one. This one's quite good, it goes from 0 0.01 of an ohm all the way up to 9 ohms. But, uh, yeah, I never use it, but it just looks so nice. But not as nice as this one. This is a nice old mega type. And here, all you do is you dial in the resistance, 300 ohms. And it's all nicely sealed, so no dust gets in there. And that is still very, very accurate. I mean, I don't know how old this is, but, you know, it's got all dovetail joints and things, and it must have cost a fortune. But my favourite one is this one. And just like that, you dial in whatever you require. 850 ohms across these two terminals. Inside these things, I've just unscrewed this one so I can show you what's in it. All it is, is lots of wire wound resistors of all the different values. And when you turn the switch, it selects which resistor to the next to the next to the next to the next etc but even these devices you can you can get them nice and cheaply on ebay and there's a lot of nice little modern ones out or you could just build one yourself always a very handy tool so we've had a, a quick look at resistors and potentiometers uh, oh here's a nice one this has got one shaft and it runs through two potentiometers and the added bonus of a switch on the back. So this would be to switch on a hi-fi and control the volume of the left and right at the same time. But this is probably the most quality potentiometer I've ever found. And they are Gibson pots out of the Gibson guitars. And they're just very smooth and nice and clean. And yeah, very expensive as well. Potentiometers come in lots and lots of different sizes. These are for the circuit boards and these are the multi-turn ones. I've got a nice clear Perspex multi-turn potentiometer and you can see the action inside when you turn this screw the little device moves up and down inside the little connection and that's rather nice to see. And the smallest ones that I've been able to take off a board are these that you can just see on Liberty's head there. We haven't covered all the types of resistors because you get digital resistors, they are on a chip and they sort of switch in banks of resistances. And there's magnetic type resistors and there's strain gauges, their resistors, and there's even voltage controlled resistors. But I uh, hope some information there has been useful to you and if it has please give me a thumbs up because that helps with the videos and let's move on to capacitors all the best thanks for watching